Welcome to this week's Who the Folk podcast, sponsored by Gold Group Realty. I'm Lonnie Goldsmith, the editor of TC Jew Folk. This week, we talked to Joshua Olstein, a St. Paul resident and a nurse who has relocated to New York City during the coronavirus crisis. We talk about why he decided to go to Manhattan, what he's seeing in his work there, and what his nursing future may hold on this week's Who the Folk podcast. Josh Olstein, welcome to the Who the Folk podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So right now, you are in New York. Normally, you are a St. Paul resident, St. Paul native. You're a registered nurse at Regents Hospital, but you are spending uh, some amount of time in New York. What exactly brought you to uh, Manhattan? Well, it was um, a mix of things. One, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, media attention surrounding coronavirus, um, and I also, as I was telling previously, my, uh, brother has, uh, a friend whose wife is a resident out here and she sent an email and the email was, was pretty, pretty shocking as well as, uh, kind of disturbing at some of the things that were happening in the hospitals. And there were, she, she mentioned that there, uh, that there was not appropriate nursing care. And when I when I read the email and then my brother told me about how Governor Cuomo had had was requesting that healthcare professionals come to New York, um, I thought about it. And first, you know, in my mind, I was like, I don't really want to do this. There's a, you know, a really high risk. I mean, what we're seeing here is pretty, I mean, unprecedented. And I, I, I definitely was concerned at the time about uh, about getting sick and, you know, because I'll, I'll be in a exposed to a, to a lot of COVID patients. And after, after a, a couple of days, after thinking about it, I decided, you know what, like, I think this is something I could, I could help out with. And I think I should do it. There were not, when I left Regents hospital was not seeing a lot of COVID pay. We didn't have a lot of COVID patients there. And I just felt like I should, I, I I'm, I don't have a wife. I don't have a home. I don't have kids. Like I'm in a perfect position to get up and actually really helped New York City. So I wanted to do it. And it also just so happened that there were three other nurses from my unit, which actually they, 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 they came out here to do the same thing. That's amazing. How many, are you meeting a lot of other nurses or healthcare professionals in general that have done the same thing that you've done and left where they're from to go to New York to help out since that right now, at least is the epicenter of COVID cases in the U.S.? You know, it's pretty amazing. It's like when I go into work and I turn a corner, I mean, everyone there is a traveler. The respiratory, wow. ther- the respiratory therapists, the other nurses. Um, there's a doctor on one of the teams that I think I, I'm pretty sure he's from Michigan. Um, but I mean, it's just people from all over the country just trying to step up to, to help out, you know, New York City deal with this with this terrible virus. That's incredible. Did you know when when you made the decision to go that you would be meeting all of these other people who who sort of had the same thought process that you did? Um, I kind of had a a sneaking suspicion that that would be the case that I think this is just something that, you know, maybe people didn't see coming and it just got so bad here. Um, I think uh, it just got so bad and I, I think people, yeah, just wanted to get up and help. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, it is, it is great to see how many people from all over the country have come, have come here and are, you know, just trying to, trying to help out New York. So what was the discussions that you had with, uh, your bosses at work here in Minnesota before you, uh, you specifically, I don't want you to speak for your, the other nurses that you work with that are also with you in New York, but Yes, what was sort of the conversation that was had in terms of, you know, could you be spared uh, here to be able to go there? Well, I wish I could say I was spared, but I actually wasn't. I had to quit my job to do this. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Um, so there's no leave of absence or anything no, for this. No. And, and to be honest with you, I'm, the, the other concern I have is that when this is, when this is done, will I, when, it, when, I go, when I return to Minnesota, will, will there be a job? for me there, or at least at my facility, like, will I be able to get my, basically get my old job back and that I, we're not certain of. So when they told you that there was no leave of absence, that to do, to do this, to go to New York, it meant resigning. 
did that give you pause? Did, did, did that make you sort of step back and say, oh, may, yeah, may, maybe well, long term for my career, this isn't the thing? First, I, you know, when I, when I kind of made the decision to do this, um, at first I was, you know, I thought about it. I'm uh, pretty close to my parents, so I, talk, I talked to them. Um, I talked to some other people that are close to me who also work in healthcare. And um, I also, the, the nurses that, that, that came here, they actually came like a few days before me. And okay. I, knew, I knew that like there was no option for um, that, that I had to quit the job. Like I couldn't take a, a you know, a leave of absence. And so, I, you know, at, when I stepped into my boss's office, I already knew I had to quit. Um, okay. I mean, one of the, one of the very cool things about healthcare, especially critical care is, you know, once you have some experience, um, you know, you can get a job just about, you know, anywhere in the country, which is kind of cool. I mean, the unfortunate thing in nursing is that state by state nursing pay changes. Um, but I, I am confident that like when this is all said and done, I'll, I'll find a way to get another job pretty quick. Um, I mean, not that I'm trying to toot the horn, but I mean, coronavirus is going to make its way around the country. And I've spoken with some of the other travelers and there are plenty of people, I think that are literally tr planning on riding this wave all throughout the country. I mean, they're just going to go. So th they'll just go from basically crisis hospital to crisis hospital, just, you know, trying to help with these hospitals that are getting surges. Wow. That's, um, it's amazing. It, it's an amazing thing that some of these other medical professionals, are willing to do and that you may be willing to do also, um, as this rides out, I suppose it's the benefit of, of, you know, being single, of not having kids, of not owning your, owning a house or anything like that, that you can, you can do that, that you can find a medical career anywhere doing this kind of work. Yeah, it is, it, it is kind of cool though. Um, I, I do like routine and I do like to, you know, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm living in a, in a small hotel room. I don't have a kitchen. Um, I mean, I actually changed hotels to this one. I mean, they offered it for free, but I also have like a mini coffee maker, which was kind of like a, turns out that's kind of a big selling point for me. Uh, <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was pretty, and, and it's just, yeah, it's frustrating. Cause like, I don't really have a lot of the, you know, things that, that I would now call luxuries of like, you know, having your own apartment or like being in an Airbnb or. Um, something like that. And also like it's things are kind of change week to week. And I mean, one of the cool, but also like frustrating things of being a travel nurse is that, you know, your, your assignment is based upon staffing at the hospital. So if the hospital has plenty of nurse of, of their nurses that are available, they will more than likely cancel your assignment, which means that it's like, all right, well, tonight you're not going to show up to work. So it's sort of like day by day based on what's happening and you, you're essentially your, your contract could, could, could be canceled almost at any moment. Um, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so do you, are you working through like a, basically a temp agency? Yeah, there's Is a, have this, okay. There's travel nursing agencies and I'm, I'm working through one of them. It's called, I, I can tell you the name. It's called AYA, A-Y-A. Okay. So one of the things that we had discussed before is that we're not going to mention where, you know, the I'll hospital you, is. I'll, I'll tell you the borough that I'm in, but I, I don't, I don't want to. Okay, don't that's the fine. Specific name of the hospital I'm at, but I'm in, I'm in Manhattan right now. Okay. So, but the good news in New York is that there are lots of hospitals in, in, in the five boroughs. If there were, you know, the the hospital that you're at the main hospital if there wasn't a need for a specific shift is it does this sort of work in an agile enough way that you could be shifted to a different hospital uh i don't think they would shift me to well so the this there there is like hospital systems so it's like within this one system they have multiple hospitals okay and i can tell you the building i'm there's like two buildings in in my one hospital so they could potentially send me to this other building but like, would they, would they send me to like Brooklyn or like, say if they, I don't know if they, if this, if this place does, but I don't think that they would send me to like Brooklyn or Queens or, or you know, maybe even, even further across town. Okay. Uh, however, they could send me, you know, within, within the one hospital building, there are multiple units and they could send me to, they could, they, they call it floating, but like they could float me to another, to another unit. 
uh, that's in more, you know, has more of a nursing need. Okay, got it. So when you were at Regions, what is what was what department did you work in? What is sort of your did you have a specialized area of training? So um, I was trained in the surgical intensive care unit. The it's a, a neurotrauma trauma unit. So okay. we partic- we see a lot of a lot of patients that maybe have been in a car accident uh, and had sustained some some head as well as other trauma. Um, they were maybe we've seen people that have been in fights, we've seen shootings, um, or people that have had, um, strokes, they will come, they will come to our unit. Um, and the nurses there are, you know, specially trained to, to administer particular drugs and to do the, um, the, the assessment and continued evaluation and watching of these patients. Um, and the, the, the very cool thing about once you work in the ICU is there's, you know, a lot of these ICUs use some of the same equip- equipment. Like, for example, I'm sure everyone's heard about ventilators. That's sure. That's like a hot topic right now. So you just, as a nurse, you need to know how to, you know, you need to know how to watch the vent and be aware of um, how a patient's breathing, and you know, be in in close discussion with the respiratory therapist about what changes need to be made on the vent that's appropriate for the patient. So the kind of work that you were doing at Regions is pretty uh replicable to what you could be doing in new york yes the the patients at regions i mean the other thing that part that i think made me like decide to do this was that the reality is is that at regions you know they're seeing covid patients as well and once again i can't divulge a lot of and i honestly don't know but like i can't talk specifically about how many covid patients they have but um they see that they see those patients as well Mm mm-hmm and yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting because I think as this thing progresses, you know, you're going to see a lot more information coming out about the care of COVID patients. And hey, who knows? I mean, I'm hopeful that perhaps in the next month, I mean, maybe by some stroke of magic, though, you know, one facility will say, hey, we found this medication and this, you know, drug will actually works to like treat coronavirus. I mean, that would be amazing, but it would be uh, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, the, I mean, it's, it's frustrating, I think, cause it's like, this is hitting us so hard and we don't know a lot about it. And it's sort of, put, you know, forcing people or forcing the medical industry to, tr- to try to come up with a, a, a cure as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, sorry. I went off a little tangent there. Interested in learning about commercial real estate or other investment properties for sale in the Twin Cities? The team at Gold Group Realty specializes in running the numbers and helping investors find great deals. Learn more at their website, www.thegold.group. No, that's okay. What, you know, one thing that I think is really interesting out of this is that because we're seeing COVID patients here in Minnesota, uh, certainly not to the degree of number. I mean, it's an exponential difference between what we're seeing here and what New York is seeing and has seen already. Was there anything that could prepare you for what it was going to be like walking into a hospital in Manhattan um, to see what you were seeing there versus what you had seen here in Minnesota? Um, pro- you know, probably not. When, when I was reading, when I was learning about what's going on in New York, I was hearing that patient that nurses here were getting like three and four and five patient assignments and they're all intubated sedated and and that was like very that's very very dangerous because now you're talking about a nurse who's extremely busy isn't able to you know attend to the alarms and and the patient and um that was part of my motivation to come out here um and i can tell you what i'm seeing in the hospital here is some extremely sick patients and it's it was kind of scary because some of these nurses were being given very inappropriate assignments. And that was, that was frustrating. That was, that was concerning. So how do you keep yourself, um, sort of centered through all this? I know a lot of things that you've, I've read and listened to and seen talk about sort of the, the self care and how the medical professionals you know, take care of themselves so they don't get um, overwhelmed uh, through all this while trying to care for their patients. So what are some things that you've found uh, work well for you in this, especially being in a city that is not home? 
Um, I, I, I do like exercise a lot. So I found, you know, on my day, well, when the weather permits on my days off, I definitely will go running for sure. Um, the other thing is that I know that this is not, you know, this is not permanent. I'm not going to be doing this for the rest of my career. Um, and you know, I've been involved in some, in some, some codes and some like distressing situations before. So I, you know, it's not my, it's not, this is not my like first go around with, with, with patients that aren't, aren't doing well. Um, but yeah. And, and I mean, this is New York. There's, even though a lot of things are closed, there's still some fantastic food out here. <laughs> well, that's good. But it, it, is it just the volume of the patients people see or, or the patients that are coming in that, um, can be overwhelming or is it not? Well, I, heard, I heard the weeks before, like the week before I was a part of like a second wave of travel nurses that came, came to New York. And I think part of the issue, part of the big issue was the fact that these nurses were dealing with like three and four patient assignments, which is very dangerous and yeah, very distressing because you're worried if one, you know, if, if you, as the nurse, you, if you only have so many staff on and say, God forbid, you know, one patient codes, um, and you're in the code, you know, when, when one patient codes, that sucks in a lot. I mean, other nurses, yeah. respiratory therapists, the doctors show up pharmacists show up i mean it's a it's a very big you know a very it's a fe literally a federal project and so say you're in a situation where one patient codes and then another one codes now that's very very dangerous because you know you, you, you the medical professionals are you know everyone's spread even thinner and so just not having enough staff was really i think a big problem for uh for some of these hospitals um, and then, yeah, then to mention it's, I mean, the way this virus hits people is very interesting. Some people will show up with mild symptoms and, you know, they have to stay home and maybe they'll have, you know, some really, really, you know, I've, I, I've met a few folks that have, that, that have gotten sick and gotten over it. And I asked them about their experiences and a lot of them will tell me like, you know, there, it wasn't that bad in the beginning. And then there was like, I don't know, two to four days where it was like really, really bad. I wasn't sure which way it was going to go. And then all of a sudden, you know, I started to get better. And then I think like within roughly like another week and a half, like, you know, I was, I was back to normal where, and other people that, you know, they will become deathly, deathly ill. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, there's, there's a, a machine called ECMO. Uh, I know in Minnesota, it's getting a lot of traction. They, they do it at the university of Minnesota. Um, it, it's funny. You, you mentioned that I just, uh, a couple nights ago, there was a, there was a piece on Carol Levin about a, uh, local uh, musician who they put who is you know ve very close to death and they use the ecmo machine and he's recovering oh, i'm glad i'm glad to hear that but yeah ecmo is is uh it's a very very i mean it's for people that are incredibly incredibly sick and essentially it takes uh it it it, it like diverts some of your blood like a lot a large portion of your blood and it will it's used to give your heart and your lungs a break um, and so I've, you know, we've seen some folks that have been on ECMO, which is very scary. I mean, that's usually like, we're doing this and we don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, sorry. No, no, that's, it's, uh, no need to apologize. That's, it's kind of amazing that sort of the range and that's, I think gotta be one of the hard things for you as somebody who's working in the hospitals is that it, it seems to be very unpredictable. Like everybody shows up with different symptoms. Uh, there is doesn't seem like there's a ton of uniformity based on what I'm hearing and reading from other places. Yeah, you know they 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 come in with different symptoms, and it's 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 really interesting about who who ends up um, not doing well, and then who does do well. Um, and the other thing that's that really has been is sort of like very depressing and sad is that you know when these like because of COVID, um, hospitals don't want to let guests in and so when patients are dying they're like dying alone um which is very sad because you know you, when you, you you would hope that in your time of death you can have your loved ones nearby but that's not always the case um that's got to be so hard i mean to do do you feel like an added onus to be some sort of comfort to to the patients as they're you know, going through this, obviously as a nurse, you, you do anyway, I haven't met a nurse who, who wasn't like that, but this is different because there is no loved one. Yeah. I mean, we try to, we try to set up with, um, like I, we try to help with arranging, um, 
you know, FaceTimes and, you know, enable, help, help the family to communicate with the patient. But um, it's also even more difficult when, uh, I mean, the other day I tried to do this for a family. I like the, uh, I, I helped to set up, I, I held the phone for the patient while the family talked to them. But then of course, like the patient is intubated and sedated. So they're not really saying anything, but you know, the family is like trying to talk, you know, words of encouragement, but it's, it's kind of difficult because, you know, you have all the humming of the machines of the ventilator, the, the, the room, the IV pumps, and like, then you have someone on, on, on like FaceTime or something that's trying to talk to the patient. Um, but at least, you know, I, I think that's, even that's helpful. Um, so I do try to do that for people when, when I'm here. Well, that's quite, quite a job that you've, uh, you've jumped into there and I'm, you know, curious to see where, where the wave takes you next, if it brings you home or if you and your uh, fellow travelers, uh, will ha- head off to some other hotspot. It'll be, uh, interesting to, to see what you decide is next for you. Yeah. I mean, I would, that is, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna, what, what, what the night, what, what the next, like what the rest of 2020 holds for me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to return to my facility back at home um, or if I will yeah, go, maybe go to another, another state. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying not to be honest. I try not to think about that too much because that is a little, that, that is also kind of distressing. I, I'm sure. It, it, and it also feels uh, like potentially a long way off uh, before you have to make that decision. How long are you planning on being in New York for? Well, so what they do is they have you, these nurse travel nurse agencies will have you sign like a contract for a particular period of time. Okay. My contract, I signed up for just a month, um, but I would like, I did try to extend it um, and I've not been given information yet on whether it will be extended or not. Um, But I would like to stay here for a little bit longer, but like, I mean, I definitely don't want to stay probably more than, you know, two months. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, maybe my, my older brother lives here. So, you know, if, if the contract en- ends, I may stay for just a little while to spend a little bit of time with him, but then I probably return to Minnesota. And then so, for another- so, are, so are you able to see your brother? Um, cause I know probably, that's the, the social distancing. You probably shouldn't be seeing him, right? No, no, we, we have not, we have not, we speak on the phone. Um, and, uh, his fee, he, he has his, his fiance's, uh, or his mother-in-law has been kind enough to make me some matzo ball soup. So we had, uh, uh, it's kind of an interesting, uh, I went over, I went, I, I didn't go in, but I went to his apartment building and he came downstairs and then he put the soup on the ground and then took like five steps back. <laughs> and I walked up and picked up the soup. You know, it was, it was very weird. It's like, this is my brother, you know I mean? Usually I'd like give him a hug or like, you know, we, we, I don't know, like high five or something. And yeah it's strange like and now i feel like i'm just like a vector of disease or something um although the on that same note one thing that is kind of promising to me is that um the people i've not heard of the people that i work with getting sick and i mean i've been out here now for for two for a little more than two weeks or three i think this is my the end of my third week and knock on whatever this is i've not gotten sick yet and would like to keep it that way uh, absolutely. I think we're all knocking for you there. Um, all right. Well, last couple very light and not COVID related at all questions for you. Um, and we'll let you uh, get back to your day. What is your favorite Jewish food? Oh, good question. My favorite Jewish food. Um, let me think about that one for a second. Um, I've always enjoyed Harosid on Passover. Okay. Uh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, definitely like matzo ball soup is always amazing. Um, I, I, my favorite, oh, that's a tough, that's a, that's a tough one. Ch- challah done right is phenomenal. Um, Brad Smith makes this like vanilla raisin challah that I might have to say might be, that might be the one. Okay. Well, you lost me at raisin, but they're, they're non-raisin. Vanilla challah is pretty good too, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and what's your favorite Jewish holiday? Uh, probably Purim. Purim's a good time. Yeah. A little festival, a little celebration. 
Yeah. You know, a little dress up. That's always fun too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, I, I have a lot of fond, fond memories when I was a kid of, of being, of Purim. Um, Hanukkah is not, is not bad too, but it's kind of, it's kind of strange at my, at my facility at home. I'm like the only, I'm sort of like the go-to Jewish guy. <laughs> like there's no other, there's really no other Jews that work there or at least not on my floor. So everybody, everybody, um, everybody always asks me about Hanukkah, you know, and it's, it, it's funny because I don't think Hanukkah has the same significance that say Christmas does, you know, and for, for, for Christianity, Christmas right. Like the biggest, you know, that's like the biggest deal. And so like, I think everyone thinks that Hanukkah is on the same level and it's like, ah, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case either. Well, Josh Olstein, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, Godspeed to you and the work you're doing. And uh, let us know where you end up. Uh, where you end up next. Uh, love to uh, keep up with your uh, travels, whether it's somewhere else around the country or just back home. All right. Well, thank you very much, Lonnie. Great talking to you. You too. You stay safe in Minnesota, okay? Will do. Thanks. Yep. Thanks so much for listening, and thanks to Gold Group Realty for sponsoring this week. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review the show. If you have someone who you think should be on the podcast, please email me at editor at tcjewfolk.com. The Who the Folk podcast is a product of Jewfolk Inc. and part of the Jewfolk Podcast Network. For more shows, check out tcjewfolk.com slash podcast.